So that we can win this race We've been working a time But they're depriving us from our right This is the right time for me to get up And take what's yours and mine They've been fooling us They're fighting us Trying to turn our back To each other In our face enough Let's rise up cause we are one yeah, yeah. In the red slavery is what we do in general. Oh, yeah. If we can come together, blocks all over the world, we can conquer. With one voice, one mind, we can conquer this. With one voice, one mind, someday we'll win. Yeah. Can't do this alone. I need you, my yeah. black brothers from all over the world. We need to join hands together to fight for our right. Oh no. Yeah. One voice. One mind. One soul. One spirit. Yeah. Time to travel there. Yeah. Tiny Makado. Thanks for the inspiration. It's carry on. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Lance Curve Show. The last time we attempted to do this show, there was a little bit of delay um, because there is a distance between Nigeria and the States, but we're very determined to do it again. And if there's any uh, wavering in the sound, just let us know in the chat room. We're trying to do our best to bring you this very talented artist and musician, Brother Clarion Pele. He's here from Nigeria now. And there's going to be a delay when we speak, it seems. So, Brother Pele, Clarion, I want you just to let it all hang out. You create music that has meaning. You create music that's not compromised. You create music without fear that reflects the world as it is, that reflects our world. Yeah. You see? And that's very rare. And it used to be where that was a thing of the past. But like I said in the title, you have proven that revolutionary music is not just a thing of the past. And it makes me feel good because I don't feel old anymore. I used to have to listen to the old songs <laughs> to get that good thing. But, you know, you move forth with a strength, a determination and commitment. And I'm quite sure there's so many more people than just me who acknowledge you and honor you for doing that because anything you, you create 
I'm going to absorb. Welcome to the show, brother. I'm not going to okay. talk. I want you just to pour it on out, how you started, how you make your music, different experiences, what you see in the world. Talk to me, brother. And there is a delay, everybody. So just bear with us on that delay. But talk to me, brother. Talk to our... Okay, to our I'm Clarion from Nigeria. I live in Lagos. I'm um, from Bayasa, Nigeria. And uh, I started music when I was 13 years old. I've always been having this um, drill of um, talking about the real world, which is um, I talk about pain, I talk about poverty, I talk about black race, you know. And my brother were the one that started this music thing. So um, when they started, I was I used to watch them from backstage, and um, you know, there was a day I, I talked to myself like. I can do this. I can do this too. It, it, this, this is running in the family. So I started writing when I was 15. And um, a brother saw me when I was writing the song. I was rousing it. And he says, is that your song? Are, are you writing the song? And I said, yes. He said, okay, if you are the owner of that song you were freestyling, you can do more better than what you're doing now. So I want to empower you with the best studio section uh, feel. And wow. he gave me the money. <laughs> and I went to the studio. I don't even know the studio to go to. So um, he directed me. He said, there's a studio across the street. And I went there and I told the producer, I want to um, produce music. And he said, what kind of genre do you do? I say, I do r and I don't even know if it's r and And he said, sing, let me hear. And I did the song. It was like, are you talking about poverty? Then I said, yes. He said, why are you talking about poverty? Why are you talking about the poor people? I said, I'm poor too. And I'm trying to strike my way out there. And there are a lot of people that are going through the same shit with me right, right. now. Sorry for the um, hood language. And I said, I want to be a voice for these people. I said, the federal government of Nigeria is not doing some things right. The blacks are suffering in general. And he says, how old are you? I said, I'm 15. And he says, wow. And you, you're 15 and you're thinking like this. What about if you become um, like 25, 30? How are you going to be thinking? Then I said, um, let, let me express myself through music. And he says, okay, sing. And I started singing and we started creating the instrument. And today, I thank God, here we are. I'm still kicking it strong, talking about my people. I want to be a voice for the voiceless. I want to be um, a voice for black race. You know, I have a lot of my brother on the struggle too. So I want to talk about most of all these things. You know, people are not talking about these things. We need to talk about these things. They did happen. You know, and um, I'm proud to be here as well. I'm proud to be here. That's all I can say for now. <laughs> wow. So, so, so tell me, um, the responses like that, where you were told that, why do you want to speak about poverty? Why do you want to speak about black people? Why do you want to speak about Africans? Have you gotten any more pushback in that direction from that way? I mean, because that couldn't have yeah. been the only time. Tell me more about that. And tell me about the people you know? who also like the music. The, one, the ones who, who, have you lost friends over this? Are they scared? Yeah, yeah. I've lost a lot of people in the struggle. You know, trying to put, um, do the same thing as I'm doing right now. I lost a friend last year, early last year. And, uh, he, you know, he was the only person that believes in my, in my movement, in this um, black race that I'm doing. You know, when I sing, it goes like, um, I'll support you with everything I have. You know, the reason why I'm talking about all this thing is that most of the artists that are doing music, they're not, they're not talking about these things. They just talk about booty calls. They just talk about partying. You know, as black, we, we have this real blood inside of us. And most of the people don't want to let us talk about these things, which is the white, some of the white, not every white, not every white. So some of the white doesn't want us to talk about this. These things did happen. They enslaved us. You know, they, 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 they took our forefathers to the, to the wooden ships and all of that, Caribbean island and all of that. So, you know, I, when, I, when I watch the film called Kunta Kunte, Django Unchained, I don't know if you've seen those movies. You know, they inspire me more to write more. So um, I'm talking about black race because it is necessary for we to talk about us blacks in general. You know, we lost most of our brothers out there are lost. We need to bring them back home. How can we do this? 
we can go to their doorstep and start talking to them about these things. But we can reach them through music. We can reach them through um, poetry. You know, that's the reason why I'm channeling my energy in this direction. And the reason why I'm talking about poverty is a lot. I grow up being poor. Still struggling right now, but you know, that's not the case. I just want to let my voice be heard, pass my message across the world to the black brothers all over the world. If you're in um, UK, USA, Asia, and all of that, we won. We, we, we were born kings and queens. So I want them to know Africa is the motherland, is the real place where they belong. And we need to fight this struggle out. We need to let our voice count. You know, I, I don't even know what to say right now because I'm so, so, so happy being here. <laughs> let it flow, brother. Let it flow. Let the words flow. Tell me something. You know, now, you know, movies and, and, and music and the different types of artists that we have, they give us a picture of what the land is, what the place is that the artist originates from. Me being born and raised in New York City and coming to different parts of the country here in the, in the United States and different parts of the world, many people have an idea about what New York is all about. And most of the time, they get it wrong. They don't really know the heart and soul of it. So that being said, with your music, with people who hear your music, they're going to get a different side of not just Nigeria, but the world, because you are an African man. But what yeah. are some of the fallacies that, and we're talking real life now, but what are some of the fallacies that you've run across when you say to people that you're from Nigeria, people that are not from Nigeria, and they also know that you're an artist, what are some of the things that you hear that are not correct? You know, if I get you right, um, you know, I get a lot of discouragement from a lot of people. You know, when some people listen to my music, it takes a spiritual person to understand spirituality, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. So when a lot of people when a lot of people listen to my music, they go like, you're not gonna go nowhere with this music. You're talking racist. And I said, I'm not talking racist. They said you're talking about poverty. Why can't you talk about something else like the girls, the beautiful girls and all of that? I said, Hey, we have different dreams. Yes. We have different views. So, you know, I talk about poverty because I, I grew up being poor. I watched my daddy go to the bush, cutting firewood and all of that. You know, even the Nigerian government is not trying. If I must say, they're not trying. Because when they, this, for example, let's talk about this lockdown issue. When they do the lockdown, they're not giving nobody anything. They're not giving people penny to survive with. And everywhere is locked down. You know, a lot of people are dying of hunger. A lot of people are, 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 are doing something they, want, they don't want to do. Like, for example, they're stealing just to feed the mouth. We have a lot of kids in Africa that doesn't have slippers on their bare foot. We need to talk about this as an artist. As an artist, we need to talk about all of these things. You know, they can't. This, these things, they can't. They count a lot. So we need to talk about these things. That's the reason why I'm channeling most of my energy. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to care about what people say is about, um, you're not going to sell. You know, I don't care about the selling. I just want to put this record on the map. Let a lot of people across the world know we know these things and we know where we come from. We kings, we queens, being black, you know, we're yes. original. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about this most. You know, most of my songs I talk about situations, I talk about I talk about life. So we need to spit life into the darkness. That's right. Seems like the sound went out a little bit. Um, it, it's going to be like yeah. that because of the transmission. The sound went out. I don't know if anybody. It's still good. Stay where you are. But because of the distance, that's what's going to happen. So there may be parts of this that we miss. We're going to keep on going with it anyway. You know, um, wow, that's a whole lot. Now, many people don't know or they'll be misled. There's poverty. Wherever we are, there's lots of poverty. We know because the oppressors and the colonizers have taken the riches and the politicians have sold us out. Nigeria has a lot of oil. Nigeria has a lot of money. Would you agree that many of the politicians there have sold the people out where they can be doing a lot better 
um, than, than the poverty that's there. Because what I don't want to have people think, they say over here in the United States, they try to push the narrative that Africa's poor, everybody's living in huts, there's poverty everywhere, when in fact Africa is, is the richest continent on the planet, and most of the countries there have vast resources. So in America, they'll say one thing to the people, how bad it is and how poor it is, and many of us who are rich in our bloodline will go along with that narrative. When in fact, the oppressors and the colonizers have gone over there, set up shop, made deals with the politicians who sell the people out, and you have other people who don't look like us come out and get the riches that are out there. So, so would you agree with that? And, and just add some on more. Okay, um, let, me, let me put it light to that. You know, I'm a typical example of what you just said. There was a time I was broke to the extent I couldn't even send money to my mama at the village. So a friend told me, he said, there's a Chinese company down the road. We should go apply that they don't take forms and all of that. That was where I knew Nigerian government has sold us out, the politicians. You know, when I started working day one, day two, day three, and I started seeing the way the Chinese treat these people, which is the original owner of the, uh, of the, of the, of the country, which is we that is in it, our country. You know, they talk to us like as if we are slaves. And when, we, when you try to fight back as black, this is my country. You can't you can do no shit to me. You know, we still have this government guiding them, which is the army, the police, you know, and all of that. You know, they, 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 they come from behind when you're not doing the thing right. Instead of them correcting you like, this is not the way to do it. They kick you as if the, 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 you, you're in a movie, like the Chinese movie you normally see on the screen. You know, they come from the back. They don't even understand English. They come from the back and they, they, they go like, I don't even understand what they're saying, but they beat a lot of black people, you know, in their own country. And I said, I will not stand and watch this. I was waiting for my turn. On a faithful day, the same Chinese man that has, has been molesting a lot of people, it came behind me. I was trying to fix the engine, and it came behind me. It was trying to, like, um, kick me off like the normal uh, blacks is to kick, you know. And I told him, I said, this is my country. And if you try that, I don't care if the armies are guiding you and all of that. I said, I'm going to smack you down. And it was like, the hands were, was like this. He couldn't drop the hand on me. The hands was like this. He couldn't drop it. Then I, I told him, I said, you enslaving people in their own country. Can we go to the Chinese uh, country, which is um, China and the rest of your, your, your countries? I said, state. I said, can I go to your country and molest you in your country? And it was like, he was looking at me because I was I was thinking different. He you was, know, being black, we're not stupid. Yeah. Being black, we're not stupid. It's just that the, 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 the Nigerian government has sold us out. Like the oil you talked about, I'm from the place where uh, they, 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 they drip the oil, the, 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 um, the, the vessel, rather. Let me keep it that way. You know, when we try to, you, I don't know if you heard about militancy, Militancy and all of that in yeah. Niger Delta. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Niger Delta. You know, we were supposed to be paying royalties, being an indigenous of that town, of that town. So, um, when the army comes, they goes like, you stick to what they told you, what the white people told you. When they told you not to come outside, you stay in your house. When they tell you to do this, you do that. Wow. And when these people, when, yeah, when these people start their reacting, you know, they don't want to um, take arms and all of that to um, scare the white people off. But, you know, I don't blame the white people. I blame our leaders sometimes. I blame our leaders mm -hmm. because they sold us out. If they don't sell us out, the white people won't have, you know, they, they told us we have independence. We don't have independence. We're still enslaving ourselves. We're doing indirect slavery, like like the song you just listened to. Indirect slavery is all we're doing in Africa. You know, you can imagine the white man coming to rule you, and they said, "How is it my life if I'm playing by rules?" That's the question I keep asking some of the leaders that I come across with. 
It's normal life. If I'm playing by rules, go there and I go here, go here and I go here. At the end of the day, you're saying life I'm breathing through is mine. It's not mine because you stay in slavery. Me. It's just that you you're doing it in a civilized way. So how do does so does out big time the politicians? You know, a lot of people are suffering. So we need to put an end to this. How can we do that through music? Expose them out. Let the world know. You know, let the whole entire black nation know what is going on with the black people that lives in the country, which is theirs, and they are still enslaving in the same country. Thank you. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, it, it's amazing to see such a resource-rich country well, it, it's not a shock knowing how the leaders are in the world today, because where you, wherever we are in the world is an abundance of resources. And like you said, we got to air out those who sell us out. Mm -hmm. Those in America can't say, oh, well, that's in Africa. That doesn't have anything to do with me because we belong to the planet. We're the original. And mm -hmm. how can I sleep at night knowing that you're going through that? I have a lot of plans to travel in my older years, and Nigeria is definitely on the scope. And um, when I come there, I want us to do some videos together with some of your songs, stuff in the studio. And also, I'm going to put it out there. You're very humble, okay. talented, but we need to help you. I want you to set up a cash app. I don't know if you have a cash app already. If you do, I, I have a cash app. I have a cash app, but I don't know how it runs. Okay, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get on the phone on a private call with you and help you out because okay. you some music out there more. You need to be able to not have to concern yourself with the cost of doing what you do, um, because that kind of music that you that you say, listen, we know that these so-called fake Jews run the music industry and the entertainment industry worldwide. And we have to support our independent artists who really don't have a chance to go up against these folks who have all of this money to promote, to shut you out. And even with Google, that won't allow certain things to even go out there. So we're going to have to go back to the day of hands-on support. And with the message, okay. messages that you've come out, come out with, with the music that you have, it's truly empowering because you're a mouthpiece for us worldwide. And I don't think that's too much to ask if we have several thousand people drop two and three and four and five dollars so that you can have and be able to do what you need to do and set up an al for alternative media aside from what they control. We've got to have our own. And for you to come okay. out with the songs that you do with no fear, you definitely have to be the front man for that. So Tell me how you come up with your songs. Tell me how frequent you make your songs. Tell me, aside from what's going on in reality, the mindset that you have, the whole procedure making your music. Share that with us. Yeah, uh, I've been recording. Every single opportunity that I see, I record good songs. I record about poverty. I record about um, the black race and all of that. I've got 38 songs recorded already. Wow. And um, I've been doing this through cutting firewood. You know, I cut firewood for you to know the struggle is real. I go to the jungle, cut firewood, sell them off, save up a lot. And I, I just make sure the music is going. I don't want to quit because if I quit, um, I'm going to fail a lot of people. You know, we need to let our voice head. We need to know. We need to let people know these things are happening right now. And they the ones that are, has happened in the past. We need to put all these things. We need to bring them to life. Let the people know, you know, there are still good people out there who is really willing to, like, um, support the movement, you know, but they, they don't see, they don't see um, some of the artists doing it. And I'm not doing this for money. I just want to make sure our voice as Blacks is counting. This is the movement I'm, I'm working on. And I, I'm praying for God to enlarge my cause so we can we can deliver this worldwide. That's my dream. So I already have 30 something songs, 37 or 36 already recorded. 
Good to go. So that's what's up, sir. Wow. The spirit of Phila Kuti. Yeah. The return. Now you're getting me right. Yeah. yeah. I understand. I understand. And I know you're not doing this for money to say, I'm going to get this big car. I'm going to have all of these women around. Because when I was in Houston not too long ago, and Dr. Kang and I and his wife were in a restaurant, and he pointed out to me, he said, look, look at every music video that played. It had a big screen, and they had music videos. And, and it wasn't anything as far as like fuggery or gangster type stuff. It was mainly the party life. All you saw were the guys dancing around with a bunch of half-naked women in front of a car, in front of a mansion or inside of a mansion, and that's all it was. Houses, women, cars, um, drinking liquor. This is what subconsciously pushed onto our youth as though that's the life that we need to aspire to. So again, you have to get your props for what you're doing, but we have to put the messages out that that is not life. That is nothing to aspire to. Look at the drive you have to cut your wood, to make ends meet, to come back to be able to do your music. There are more people living in that reality, whether it's cutting wood or cleaning in an office late at night or being somebody in a, in a position that, 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 that the world doesn't really respect. The, the world respects. I'm talking about the man-made world. They respect this high thing. If you have money, if you have this, then they'll bow down and be jealous at you. But they'll look at a person like yourself or myself and say, oh, they're nothing. You know what I mean? But we know our missions. Define for me again, if, if we had to say it in one minute or less, what is the mission of Clarion Pelé? What is your mission? Give me an elevator pitch. That's what they call it. In 90 seconds or less. What is your mission? Okay. 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 This, okay. This is the mission. This is the mission. I want to make sure every black out there knows where they come from. Because a lot of people are forgetting where they come from. They're That's forgetting right. the nationality, the originality, where they, where they inhale from. So I want to bring these people back home. You know, and I want to make sure we have a voice as blacks all around the world. That is my mission. I want to let our voice count. That is my mission. And by the special grace of God, we're going to achieve this. With the support of you and every other black, we can make it if we try, like I said in a song. So that is my mission. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I got the timing down right now with that little bit of delay. You know, there's a little delay when we talk. I kind of wait until I see your lips stop moving. Then I know I got yeah. it right. And again, for everybody who just tuned in, we have musician Clarion Pillay, who is a revolutionary, <laughs> who is not afraid to speak about what goes on with African people all over the world and our mistreatment and, and the reality of the situation. We're not going to sit here and, 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 and lead our people into slaughter with the trinkets and baubles and rubies of this world to make them think that they need to aspire to that, to that shallow way of living. But we need to connect and uplift each other. And I, I'm going to say, brother, you are, you are blessed already um, because you have embraced it. You didn't run away from it. You didn't sell out. You could have easily sold out and maybe even gotten somewhere with the talent that you have. And I'm going to wrap this down right now because at least once a week I want you on. And I want to always play your music. And we're going to be talking about lining that up. We're going to be talking about setting it up where, we, where you can directly get some help. Because look, for all of us who love Fela Kuti or Bob Marley or Peter Tosh, any one of the great musicians that are out here who, who, who make timeless music, think about Marvin Gaye, the way he sung, what's going on, and make me want to holler, and all those songs that are timeless that really you can think about from that day, it's, 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 you yeah. know, to the day. it's timeless, right? So what you're doing is setting the foundation now for something that's going to reach people generations from now, okay? So the screen kind of blacked out, brother. I don't know if this is uh, the divine way of saying for me to shut up. 
He yeah, he fell off. He fell off. And I know he'll come back on in a second. Let's give it a second. But again, he's in Nigeria. We're using the internet. Okay, here he is again. Let me let him on in. Okay. Okay, let's see if he if he comes on in. My network is freaking out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, no, guys. You you don't have to apologize. We, we we're gonna expect that because technology is pretty good, you know. Um, we gotta expect that with the distance that's between us. So um, I'm gonna wrap this down, brother. But um, this is gonna be okay. a issue. We're gonna speak about life. We're gonna play your music when you have your shows. We're gonna keep your name out there. I'll do okay. what I do behind the scenes to put you out there. That no matter what, Google is gonna acknowledge you. Google is gonna acknowledge you. You know, so help me. Okay. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I want the support. I want the name out there. We're going yeah. to, in an orderly way, put your music out there. You already have some stuff on SoundCloud. I'll provide the links on the bottom. But while the going's good, I want you to have the last word and we'll wrap it up. And we'll be back in a few days, or two, three days, whatever. And um, we're going to keep doing this until we smash it down. But talk to me, brother. I'll let you have the last word before we go. Okay. Okay. Ask me a question. Oh, I, I thought you were. I thought it was a delay. No, I was saying I was gonna let you have the last word before we go, <laughs> and just you know put it out there what you want to put out there. Um, you're on SoundCloud, correct? Okay. Yeah, give me the last word. Yeah, I'm on SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. T talk to us. Do you have an email address? Whatever. Um, yeah, I have an email address. I'm going to drop it for you. Okay. Um, yeah. On your box. Yeah. And I'll put it down below in this video. And again, to everybody, you know, we apologize for the delays and stuff, but this transmission is going a long way and we're doing quite well, you know? So um, we have to expect those things. But again, brother, we're going to wrap this show down. I appreciate you. Okay. Uh, Clarion Palais. We're going to play more of your music. We're going to have the links down below. I'll come back later on and do that when I work on this show and get it up on the site. I have a tremendous amount of work I'm doing. Okay. I'm so glad that you're here and you have my support and the support of so many. And I want to hear your responses wow. in the Thank comment you. section. And um, you're very valuable to us because music is like a bomb. It's a bomb that you could never be accused of setting off to kill people. I want to give yeah. Okay, I want to set, like um last word. I want to talk about my last word. Um, every black should know where they come from. If some are lost, they should know we are Africans. We are black. We are born real blood, and we are from Hebrews. We we the real Israelite. You know, and um they should look out for their brothers. You know, being black, you should look out for yourselves. You know, right. a lot of crazy shit is happening out there. We need to have our backs. You know, have each other's back as brothers. We need to support each other so we can grow and take the throne back. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm happy to be here. I'm honored. Thank you, brother. It's an honor and a pleasure. And this is the beginning of something really big and good. And um, like I said, I'm just glad that I can. Uh, we've connected and I'm glad that you reached out. And again, this is just the beginning. And I promise you that. I promise you that. And brother Kwaku loves your songs, you know. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap this down now and um, okay. have a good night. I know it's 5.01 here on the East Coast of the United States. What time is it over there? What's it like, 11 or 12 o'clock or something? It's 10 o'clock in Nigeria. Okay, so it's a four-hour difference. 10 right? and the night. Okay, definitely. So 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? No, 10. 10, okay. 10 o'clock. Okay, all 10 right. 10 p.m. It's not that far. It's the same as Ghana. Yeah, because, I mean, there's one little country between Ghana and Nigeria, right? But trust me, when, when we open up, we were able to travel. It's 10 p.m. in Nigeria. I want right to meet now. you the face. Yes, brother. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to wrap it down. And um, have a good evening. Thank you so much. And may the creator continue to bless you. We truly appreciate you. God bless you. Yeah. All right? Bye, Thanks. sir. All right. Good night. Right.
Everybody's in fear though. That's what I'm saying. So so is it strictly a place of fear that we are operating from? And the fact is that we we're not gonna get out of that place. And even sometimes when I speak and some people will look at me and say, Man, I, you, know, you gotta be careful of what you say. And I tell people, please do not tell me to be careful in what I have to say. I am not afraid to speak. I am not afraid because, look, I am here to do work. The fact is that when I go to my job, I don't just stand here and look at my job and hoping that it get done in some other way. So the job that I'm here to do, I am doing. I don't want anybody to sit and say, oh, man, I, I, I'm worried about this. Don't worry about me. I don't want people to go around and worry when is white supremacy going to get him. These are the things that they want you to think. These are the places that they want to put you in. Paralyzes. You see what I'm saying is that's why we don't do nothing. We see our sisters being beat down in the street as a strong black man. We stand here and we look. And all we can do is take up our phone and videotape it. And what happened after that? You see what I'm saying? We see these things and yet we are paralyzed by them. But the fact is that Here's where the danger comes in. The danger comes in because I will look at you, okay? I'll give you a scenario. Here's a white guy over here. He's got a lot of food, even food that he's just wasting. And you have a gun, but you ain't going over there to rob him. But here is it that. Me, are you who live right next to him, who hardly can find enough to, to eat and feed the family? That's who is coming to kill. So, if, so what does that say to you now? You see, the, the, this is so much self hate. It is so much self hate that is within you, who are me, that is going to destroy the other person who look like you are me. And and the food, all the food is over there. But you won't cross that line to go and get the food that you need. You're going to cross the line to take away what this other person hardly even have. Because you hate yourself so much that you figure if you destroy yourself, then it's good for you. You know, I don't have to worry about this God that's living over here because the God ain't going to give me no food. And if you don't volunteer to give me no food, I'm not going to go over there to take it. You see what I'm saying? So that's the place, that's the place that we live. That's the place that we live. And so we have to stop feed into this, into this narrative where we are living in such fear that when a brother starts to speak truth to power, we are ready to say, oh man, hush, hush, hush. I don't want the prisoner to come in and get you next, or to get me. So be quiet, you know. See, just don't say anything. Be careful what you say. And that's where we live. That's a very dangerous place to live. It is. But the fact is that we can't see that because we are so caught up. We are so caught up and we are hoping. We are hoping that we just wake up one day and everything magically change. And that is the, the thing where all of our people, a great deal of our people, is waiting for this magical person to come out of the sky and fix everything for them. That's what I'm saying. It's, it is no magical person that is going to fix it for you. When you have a problem in your house, you must be the one to fix it. You see, what I'm saying is I'm not dealing from a place of logic. I'm not dealing from a place of imagination. Because a lot of us, we're dealing from a place of imagination. And that's where the problem comes in.
Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our name, our language, our culture, our God, and our religion? Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, for us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and misgiving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's check back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly that before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast, eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Marco Polo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China, he took silk and gunpowder. From India, he took juice, manganese, and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold. From the Mideast, he took barrels of oil untold. Raping, robbing, and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So, my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. To America, we were living in the east. By the Nile River, we were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silk and robe, slippers of gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven, black man hell. When the white man came to America, he told the Indian, I am your white brother. He said, Red man, I'll treat you the best. Yet and still he pushed the Indian further west with his white woman and higher water. Tricks and lies, he stole America, the original owner of this nation is cooped up on a reservation so my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven black man hell he needed someone to work the land his back was too weak he needed you, black man, so he commissioned Sir John Hawkins to 
commit the worst, most grievous sin, to take a man who's born to be free, and bring him down to slavery, to sell a man as merchandise, on his body put a price, oh my friend it's easy to tell, white man heaven is a black man hell. 